Let's start with the Santa problem. A chocolate figure of Santa Claus wrapped in an aluminium foil is electrically charged and hangs on an insulating cone. The figure shows slowly losses its charge because the air has a small but non-zero conductivity sigma. Assuming that the air conductivity is everywhere the same, how long will it take for the Santa's charge to half? Okay. So we are starting with it and uh, as you, you can see that Santa is having some charge so I am making a surface around it which covers the complete Santa. Okay. So let me consider a small element here. The Santa system is having some charge Q. So there must be some electric field here. And I'm not sure about the direction of electric field. So I've considered the random direction of electric field. As you know that electric field and current density have a very simple relation. J vector is equal to sigma times E vector. where j vector is the current density and e vector is the electric field intensity at a particular location <coughs> this is a conducting medium so there is some finite conductivity sigma and there is a flow of charge and the, that amount of charge which is flowing through this boundary is same as the amount of charge lost by the santa so i can also write that current coming out from this cross section is also equal to minus dq divided by dt and the current is nothing but integration of j vector dot da vector for this entire surface where j vector is the current density okay if you replace the value of j vector here j vector is sigma times e vector you will get minus dq by dt is equal to sigma times integral e vector dot da vector for this complete surface okay uh, we know that integration of electric field on a closed surface represents the total flux to that surface according to Gauss law so I can write it Q by epsilon 0 and there is a very nice relation very simple relation which can be easily integrated so you have a relation minus of dq by dt is equal to sigma divided by epsilon 0 into Q in most of such systems charge usually reduces exponentially and same we are getting here so if someone catches this he or she can easily predict the type of charge flow here the initial charge is q naught and momentary charge is q so i can integrate and get the answer q is equal to q naught e to the power minus sigma over epsilon 0 into t okay so this was the challenging problem but 12 the problem was easy if you come to know about the trick involved but the problem can be difficult if you are not able to get the trick exactly okay so we are going to discuss the next problem now the problem number 13 <coughs> which is a problem from magnetic field intensity yes a charged particle enters a region in which there is a frictional force proportional to the particle's speed and obviously if it is frictional force then it must act in the opposite direction of the velocity so we can say that the frictional force f vector must be equal to minus k times v vector where k is a positive constraint okay 
So uh, when there was no magnetic field, it is stops at a distance 10 cm from the starting point. When there was magnetic field B, it is stops at a distance 6 cm. They were supposed to calculate the final distance of the uh, particle from the initial point when the magnetic field is twice of B. So let's start forming the required equations. Okay, so I am writing the net force on the particle. Net force on the particle is equal to m times dv vector divided by dt, which is equal to q times v vector cross b vector minus k times v vector. If you integrate both sides and you put the limit starting from v naught vector which is initial velocity to 0, you will get m times 0 minus v vector is equal to q times integration of velocity vector will be s vector cross b vector minus k times s vector. Okay, If you square both sides, you will get m square v square v is the initial velocity v naught square is equal to Q square s square b square plus k square s square minus 2 times q s vector cross b vector dot s vector into k obviously <coughs> but this term is 0 because s vector is perpendicular to b vector s vector is perpendicular to b vector which is shown in the figure as well so you are left with this equation a, I am writing m square v naught square is equal to a is equal to q square b square s square. I am assuming q square b square is equal to some constant c into s square plus d into s square. d is a constant but c depends on magnetic field. Okay. So now we are going to form three different equations for three different situations. Okay. When B is equal to zero, the equation will be A is equal to ds square. Equation number one. When B is equal to B, the equation will be A plus C a is equal to c s square plus d s square equation number two right when b is equivalent to two times b the left side will be a but right side will be 4 c s square plus d s square this is equation number three okay how it becomes 4 c if you double the magnetic field this term q square b square will be four times okay so when you solve these three equations you just replace the value of a here a is equal to ds square so you just replace the value of a here and you just rearrange them you'll get a very simple equation <coughs> s is equal to okay just a moment, let me go back. Yeah, here the S is 10 centimeter. In first case, this will be S1, it will be 10 centimeter. In second case, this will be S2, 6 centimeter. In third case, this will be S3, which you want to calculate. Okay, so uh, you have to replace different values of S. In first case it is 10, second case it is 6, in third case you want to calculate the value of S. Okay. Okay. So coming back to the next page. Yeah. So when you will rearrange it, you will get S1 S2 divided by under root 4 times S1 square minus 3 times S2 square. Which will give you S1 which is 10, S2 
which is 6 divided by 4 times s1 square means 400 minus 3 times s2 square which is 3 into 36 okay on solving we'll get 30 divided by square root of 73 centimeter which is approximately 3.51 centimeter so this is the final result if you further increase the magnetic field this test will further decrease why you think about it and write down in the comment box i'll let you know about this reason which is a very simple reason in my next video thank you stay tuned